The federal government has announced it will not defend the Affordable Care Act in its most recent constitutional challenge. And by taking that position, they say they won't protect consumers with pre-existing conditions. We'll take a look at what's going on in this lawsuit, Texas versus the United States, and what the timeline might be for any changes, if any at all. But let's get started by identifying what it is we're talking about. It's the lawsuit of Texas versus the United States. This is a constitutional challenge to the individual mandate portion of the Affordable Care Act. There are about 20 states that joined this lawsuit, joining the state of Texas, Wisconsin, where we are, is one of those states. And it's the most recent in a long line of legal challenges. This one is arguing that because Congress has kind of essentially zero zeroed out the tax penalty for not being insured through the most recent tax bill passed by the House and Senate and signed by the president. Therefore, the whole individual mandate should fall. And if the individual mandate falls, so should the rest of the Affordable Care Act. That's what the lawsuit is saying. The Department of Justice has signed on to that lawsuit and in so doing, when filing its brief said, they're just not gonna defend the Affordable Care Act in this lawsuit. This is largely unheard of for the Department of Justice not to enforce the laws of the land as they stand right now. So the department has taken this position. It sent a letter to both the House and the Senate leadership on both sides of the aisle, letting them know of this position. And instead, they are going to leave it up to um, some intervener states to, def to defend the law instead, like the state of Illinois has intervened as one of the states that wants to defend the Affordable Care Act. Now, the Department of Justice, in refusing to defend the Affordable Care Act, is saying we're not going to defend the individual mandate. And with it, we are not going to defend the provisions of guaranteed issue and community rating. They didn't go as far as the Republican states, the 20 states that signed on that said the whole Affordable Care Act should go away. The Department of Justice stops with just the individual mandate, guaranteed issue, and community rating. They're willing to say the rest of the Affordable Care Act is just fine, we're just gonna leave that intact, but we're there just going after these three main provisions. These are the most popular provisions of the Affordable Care Act, though. These are the ones that make sure that people with pre-existing conditions can have insurance. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more in just a second. What they actually asked for in their brief uh, was to declare the individual mandate unconstitutional, to get rid of guaranteed issue and community rating, and to do so by declaratory judgment so that when plans are sold on January 1st, 2019, the start of the next marketplace year, they won't have these protections included. That's the Department of Justice argument. They then, like we said, say the rest of the Affordable Care Act can stay in place, um, but their link was without the tax penalty for not being insured, the individual mandate no longer functions as a tax and therefore the rest of this shouldn't stand. And like we said, there are 17 intervener states that say, no, 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 the Affordable Care Act is the law of the land, we're gonna defend it, and here's why. And this is the biggest reason why, guaranteed issue. This is what prohibits insurers from denying coverage based on health status. It requires insurers to offer coverage to and accept all eligible individuals who apply, even if they have pre-existing conditions. It gets rid of the old rules of underwriting, and that's where the community rating comes in. You can't use health status in underwriting. In other words, if somebody is sicker than somebody else, you can't charge them more for their insurance. The only uh, issues you can charge more for in your premiums are things like family size, geographic area, age up to a point, and tobacco usage. You can't use disability status to charge higher premiums like you did before. Now, guaranteed issue and community rating are the two provisions the Department of Justice said they wanted to get rid of. Now, these are the provisions that are critical to market reforms. They're what are the, the basis for protecting people with pre-existing conditions, like we said, but also provisions critical to building stability into the marketplace. Now, there have been health policy experts commenting on this, as you can imagine, saying if this, these provisions were struck down, they would swiftly bring in stability to the entire insurance market across the country. Millions of Americans would become uninsured after being denied coverage or rated up beginning in 2019. It has been called so destabilizing, and we're quoting Timothy Jost here, the health law expert and former health affairs blogger, 
who says the Department of Justice argument, if adopted, would be breathtaking in its effect. It's just dumbfounding. In fact, it would be the most destabilizing thing you could do to the insurance market. He says, you know, if you're an insurer, you don't know what you're supposed to do. It's building such confusion into the market. Here you've been getting rid of this kind of uh, underwriting in, uh, based on condition for the last since 2014 when the marketplace first opened. And now you're scrapping that entirely in its argument. This would be completely destabilizing to the marketplace, not to mention unpopular. Now we're looking at the Kaiser Health tracking poll from June of 2017, where 70% of the people polled said the federal government should continue to prohibit charging individuals with pre-existing conditions more for their coverage. And this was the majority opinion on both sides of the political spectrum. You can read more about the Department of Justice response to the court where you can read the letter the Department of Justice sent to the House and Senate leadership on both sides of the aisle. And you can also look into this Kaiser Health tracking poll that talks about the popularity of not discriminating against people with pre-existing conditions. Now, we said we would talk about timeline. This is not the law of the land. The, right now, consumers with pre-existing conditions are protected. They can get health insurance and they can't get charged more for that. If effective, if this court case succeeds and becomes the law of the land and the Department of Justice position is adopted, there could be changes as soon as January 1st, 2019. There are legal scholars that say the likelihood of success in this lawsuit is slim, but anything can happen. We're going to keep watching the outcome of this suit. We will keep you posted. But remember right now, nothing has changed in terms of contact protecting consumers with pre-existing conditions. You could share your story with us about what it's like to have coverage if you do have pre-existing conditions or what it'd be like to go back to the days before the Affordable Care Act when there were no such protections. You can send us a question or an email and you can do all of that at healthwatchwisconsin.org.